here's Brody Brazil. In this video, I'm going to share with you the vocal signal chain that I use for this microphone, the Shure SM7B, in tandem with my audio interface, that's the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. The signal goes out of here, I'm recording it on my Mac, uh, but I can also get it straight into my A10 Mini Pro ISO, which is right here, and this is how I live stream. This is also how I create YouTube videos that are recorded. But going back to this microphone, I know it's one of the most popular right now out there for YouTubers, for podcasters, and it makes a lot of sense. It's a dynamic, it works in less than optimal rooms, ones that are not treated, ones where you know sounds reflect off the walls, it's a bit echoey. Here in my home studio, and you can see it here, my everyday driver is the Neumann U87 AI. That's a condenser microphone for me and this setup. It's exactly what I'm looking for. And I also have a separate vocal chain for it, which is also a different video here on my channel. But there are some good uses for this Shure SM7B. Like I said, long form narration, uh, podcasting, a lot of talking. This microphone to me, it, it lacks a lot of the detail that you're getting on a condenser. It gives you some smooth, dark tones, um, sounds that are not fatiguing on the ear in a long listening period. But I also have to say that this microphone is tricky. It is a very quiet microphone. By that I mean you really have to drive it. You gotta you gotta give this microphone a ton of gain. You hear the word, the term gain hungry all the time. Uh, well, for example, when I get into the settings, I'll show you. But before it even goes into the interface, I'm using the Triton Fed head right here which uses phantom power to give this mic an extra 28 dB of gain before it goes into my interface. Okay, so this is the mic. I should tell you on the back, there are two switches. My presence boost right now is on, that's engaged, and my low cut, uh, low roll off, that is flat. So no low roll off, and yes, a presence boost on the top end. And that brings me here to my signal chain. Now, I'm on this channel right here. Don't mind the fact that it says RE20. In fact, let me just uh, change that not to confuse anybody. This is the SM7B. So here we go with the microphone settings. I have my preset on as the SM7B. I can tell you that I'm gained up 28.5 dB here on the interface. And my preamp and the Unison plugin I'm using here is the Solid State Logic 4000E channel strip. I use this one on pretty much every single microphone I have because it's so versatile, it's kind of a Swiss Army knife. It's a great place to start. I am using expansion, a little bit less than five here on the range. My threshold is about negative 10. Quick attack, quick release. And when I stop talking, you can see it's taken away about 6 dB right there. Let me show you what the difference here is, is here when I have it on versus off. It's on right now. And I just turned it off. Expansion's off. And now expansion's on. If you're listening critically, maybe you can hear some of that little hiss that this microphone makes. Again, um... This is a tricky microphone. It needs a lot of gain, and it, it does carry a little bit of hiss uh, in the background, especially for soft speakers. I don't know that I recommend this microphone for a soft, a soft speaker. If you're, if, unless you're going to be talking at a normal volume and a close proximity, this may not be the right microphone for you. Okay, not low cutting. I am high cutting here at 16,000 hertz on the very top end, and then we get into the EQ section here. High frequency, I am boosting at about 4,000 hertz. That's where I'm boosting here with this EQ to about 3 dB. Then in the high mids, I'm cutting at about 700 hertz. Uh, on a pretty tight Q, I'm cutting about, well, let's call it 2 dB if each one of these dots is a 3. Uh, then we get into the low mids. I am cutting at about 250, 275 right there. Pretty tight Q. And I'm actually cutting about 4 dB. So that's a pretty significant cut. Let me show you what it sounds like if I turn this up. See, the opposite is a 4 dB boost. And I feel like this is super boxy. As opposed to where it was right here. This comes across sounding more natural to me. And then on the low end, and this microphone does have a natural, like, you know, presence. Oops, hit the table there. It does have a natural uh, uh, boost on the on the low end if you get close to it because you do need to talk from a, a pretty near near proximity. So I'm only boosting about 1 dB at, let's call it, 
100 hertz. Now, if I take this EQ away, you can hear how it sounds right here. There is a whole other level of EQ, but I'll touch on that in just a second. But you can see the difference. You can hear the difference, hopefully, when I have that on or off. I am pushing up the fader a little bit. I have the output turned up just a little bit to get a real sound of this plugin. Uh, you'll see the 1176 next in the chain, although that is inactive. Um, I'll, I'll turn it on here. This is a prior version of my vocal signal chain. Every year, I'm trying to optimize how this sounds. I'm, I'm trying to sweeten the sound. Um, I'll turn it off. I'm always modifying you know, the sound I'm getting here with these microphones. So that's an old version of it. I'll just leave it there. I can turn it on if I need more compression. And it used to go EQ, compression, EQ, compression. But in this case, it basically goes expansion, EQ, one more round of EQ. I'll get into that here with the Neve 1073 Legacy. Uh, not boosting this at all. On the top end at about 12,000 hertz, we're, we're adding 2 dB. Um, at 700 hertz right here, I'm actually cutting just a little bit. Let's call it 1 dB. And again, it's, it's just such a, a mild cut right there at 700 and then on the low side here, I'm boosting at, let's call it 60, but only to maybe like 1 dB. So not necessarily even noticeable. Um, and I am low cutting here at 50 hertz. Now, if I turn this on and off, for example, I just turned it off, I turned it off, and now I turned it on, and you really don't notice a lot of difference here. I don't, I don't really need to overdo this microphone with a lot of EQ. All right, and that brings me to the LA-2A. And you can see the compression I'm using here, and it's not a lot. I'm on limit mode. My emphasis knob is turned to about 2 o'clock, gains at 30. Peak reduction is a little bit less than 40. And honestly, the needle is moving less than I even expected right there. It's barely hitting negative 1, negative 2 sometimes under normal speech. Now, if I crank this up right here, now, now you can hear a big difference, but um, that's not exactly where I want it. I also want it for excited speech that I'm somewhere below... In this case, minus 5, minus 7. Um, so I'm not adding a ton of compression onto this microphone. The real trick is the more you boost this, the more you gain it up, whether it's the compressor, whether it's the preamp, you know, just the more, the more self-noise you're able to hear, and that's what I'm trying to reduce. So I'm really touchy about this microphone and pushing it too much on a volume level because I don't want to get any of that self-noise. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? This entire time you've been hearing my vocal signal chain for this microphone, but what about now if I go in here after the fact and let you hear what this sounds like completely dry with no post-processing? Here's what the SM7B sounds like straight into the interface, again, with the FET head, 28 dB, and another 26 dB of gain from the UAD. But there's no effects, no, again, no processing. This is... This is what the microphone sounds like completely raw. Now, some people might think this is fine. You're also probably really noticing a difference because your ear got accustomed and got trained to how this sound with all the processing, but it is a clear difference, right? I mean, it makes a giant difference when you add some processing to this microphone. I just wanted you to hear what that sample was like. You're also seeing here the other list of microphones that I use on a regular basis, and I am trying to get them all to sound similar although that is pretty impossible because yeah some are dynamic some are condensers some have different pickup patterns i mean they're constructed entirely differently they're all made for different purposes um, but i am trying to tune all of those in to have a similar sound so again this microphone for me it was one of the first that i actually purchased like real broadcast microphone um I don't know if i would recommend it to everybody i know a lot of people use it but i would definitely say you need to power it correctly. You need to EQ it correctly. Uh, way too many people just plugging it in and thinking, oh, this is the this is the complete solution to my sound. This is instantly going to make it sound how I want. Uh, it'll get you there. It'll get you there, but, but you also need to do a few things along the way too. If this video helped you, maybe consider giving it a thumbs up so it can be recommended to others here on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. I've got a couple more videos of all the other mics that I have uh, out now or coming out soon.